Hey guys, Spud Knocker here, as always. And today we're here on my desktop because instead of flying in DCS world, we're going to do a tutorial on how to use Verbal Control's configuration tool for two distinct purposes. Number one, how to create a profile and calibrate your controls directly out of the box to get them up and running as soon as possible. And two, how to swap out different components of your verbal controls, such as swapping out different stick grips you may have for using on different aircraft within DCS World. I recently received an awesome shipment and care package from Verbal Controls with a bunch of new stuff and I am super excited about my brand new VFX stick grip, which is a model of the F-14 Tomcats stick grip. So as a result, I have been using the VPC configuration tool quite a bit lately and it's not exactly the most intuitive piece of software around and I figured if I'm having problems, people out there are also going to be having problems as well, and it'd be a great thing to make a tutorial video on. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, first thing we're going to do here is talk about how to get your controls set up right out of the box with a new profile and a new configuration setting. So let's go ahead and open up the software. When you first open it up, this is what you're going to see right here. And unlike a lot of other tutorials out there, you really do not need to unplug all of the USB connections to your motherboard and your PC case itself. That would be incredibly intrusive if the software required you to do that, because I have things like fan controllers, RGB nodes, all kinds of stuff that I would literally have to open up my PC case to get rid of all of the USB connections besides, say, my Warbird of uh, stick base. That would just be ridiculous. So do not feel like you have to do that. You can have as many USB connections to your PC as you want, and you can still configure your verbal controls no problem. So as I said, you'll be greeted by the screen. And up here, up top, we have a list of all of those USB connections, as I said before. And you just wanna scroll down and find the piece of hardware that you're actually trying to create a profile for and create a uh, configuration for. So we'll click on our Warbird stick right here. And mine up here does already say ready because I already have a profile loaded onto it. And I've already calibrated that profile, but yours will probably say not NA in red up here or not ready in red up there. And that's totally okay. We'll go over how to actually make sure that you get a good green check mark and you're good to go to hop into DCS with your new stuff. So down here, we'll go down to the profile tab right here, and we want to create a new profile. And so you will not have a, anything green or anything good to go or anything looking nice when you first come into your verbal controls right out of the box. What you'll see is something to this effect, select base up here with red, no base selected, as well as select grip or modification with nothing there as well. So let's set up a new profile for what I already have on my Warbird base as of right now. I currently have my Thrustmaster A10 slash F16 st stick grip that's on there right now as I was just flying the F16 in DCS, testing out some new missions. So we'll go ahead and we'll select the base. We either can select the Warbird base or the Mongoose T50 CM2 base. I currently have the VPC Warbird base set up right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that guy and it shows us a nice picture of it so we know exactly which one we're using. Then we'd wanna select our grip or modification. So we'll come down to this drop down list and we can select a bunch of different stuff here from the older T50 grips to the brand new T50 grip to the F14 grip to the Thrustmaster Cougar Grip, or even the Warthog slash FA-18 stick grip as well. So because we're going to set up a new profile for, say, our um, Thrustmaster Warthog stick grip that we've got on the base right now, we're just going to go ahead and go with this one. You'll see that uh, the Thrustmaster uh, options do not have a nice little picture, but you can just go off of what it tells you. So what we're going to do now is we're going to follow these instructions right down here in this little box. Select the correct VPC base and grip. We've already done that, so we're good to go there. Select which side, left, right, the VPC device goes on. I actually have it mounted in the center, right between my legs here, which is a little bit funky for an F-16, of course, but that is actually, in fact, going to be on the right-hand side. 
because you're using your right hand for it. A lot of VPC stuff is also aimed towards, say, space sim enthusiasts who have two sticks, one on the right for their right hand, one on the left for your left hand. So even if you have it mounted in the center, you want to make sure that it says right right here because you're going to be using it and flying with your right hand on the stick. No twist grip or in parentheses locked twist, we want to have that checked as well. There is no twist grip on the Thrustmaster Warthog stick grip. Um, I have rudder pedals, so that's no problem for me. Other VPC slash Ripple controls um, stick grips, the newer ones do have a, a stick twist for throttle inputs, or sorry, rudder inputs. And my new F14 stick grip is one of those, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. All right, so now we're going to simply hit the create new profile, and it's going to do some loading and just give it a second it's going to go through a few different cycles of loading and testing and things like that don't rush it it needs to kind of do its little thing all right after that second loading bar you should be good to go and at this point we need to go up to the axes section and we see these values up here and we can see the values are kind of jumping around a little bit we want to make sure to have the axes fully calibrated we're going to want to make sure that we have all the values set at 50% so that way everything's right in the center. Um, if things are not right in the center, when you hop into DCS World or your space sim or whatever you're flying with, your craft, your aircraft, your spacecraft is going to be flopping all over the place. So we now need to go down to calibrate axes right down here. And wow, we can really see that's not looking good there. If you had, say, like a uh, T50 CM2 grip on the base, you'll see a bunch of other axes and you just want to take all of the axes that you have and you just want to gently move them back and forth throughout their entire length of travel, pushing the X and Y axes of my stick all the way around until we're back in the center. And once things are not jumping around anymore, would look good there and we can say save calibration to profile we're going to wait for it to load and everything to start looking good again there we go and boom we're now calibrated and we can see that our values here are at 50 percent and as we move the stick around we can see those values increase and decrease in the different axes. If you had, say, the brake axes for a stick grip like the CM T50 CM2, you would see that stick grip uh, or that brake axes work just fine as well, and you'd be good to go. I also like to go to the buttons and just go through all the different buttons, make sure that nothing is corrupted, all the different hat switches that we have on our A10 stick at the moment. Everything is looking great there. Everything works as advertised, so we're good there. We know that we now have a profile for our Thrustmaster A10 stick grip slash F16 stick grip ready to go for us right out of the right now and we're ready to hop into an F16 and go rip around the sky. Now we want to go back to the profile section, and this profile that we just created is loaded into the circuits and the little chips that are inside of the Warbird base. And what if we want to actually start to create different profiles so that way we can just quickly interchange out different stick grips. Well, all we got to do now is then go down here and click export profile to file and you can browse and create a new folder if you'd like. I have a new folder within my saved games folder that I called stick grips where I can save all of my different um, profiles for different grips. So why don't we go ahead and call this one the A. 10 grip and we'll save that and now we're good to go anytime we want to put our Thrustmaster Warthog stick grip onto our Warbird base we just pop it on and then we go import from file we click on our A10 grip open save VPC device and we're good to go so just for the sake of an example here We'll go ahead and we'll take off of our A10 stick grip and we'll throw on an F14 stick grip and you guys will see how the process goes for that. So I'm just going to gently unscrew my A10 grip from 
the Warbird base. Yeah. Lift, gently lift it up. Be very, very cautious and very, very gentle when you're doing these actions because the little pins on the connectors between the grip and the, and the base can be very easily bent and that is an expensive mistake to make and you don't want to tug on the wires and the connections that come from inside the grip and inside the base too hard because again you could potentially break something inside there always take care of your equipment and it'll take care of you just make sure that's connected well got my f14 grip on there i'll just twist it down at a nice angle that's comfortable in my hand as the grip sits between my knees here in my virtual cockpit. Make sure it's twisted down nice and tight. And then we are ready to go to actually import a profile that will work correctly with our F14 grip that we now have on our Warbird base. So all we need to do, we don't have to worry about selecting the different grips or anything like that from these drop down menus, even if you want to see the grip uh, picture there, it really doesn't matter. All we need to do is go down to the import profile from file, click on the uh, profile that has your F14 grip included in it for the F14 grips calibration for its different axes and things like that. Hit open, go up to the top here, click the green save VPC device, let it go through its loading. As again, we're gonna see two different loading bars the first time you do it, it's gonna feel like, holy crap, that's taking a long time. I'm getting kind of worried, maybe something went wrong. And presto, we are good to go. And if we go to the axes tab, we can see, holy crap, we've got a whole bunch of axes now. We've got the X and Y axes for actually moving the stick around. We've got the braking axes for the uh, Russian style braking lever that's on the front of the stick. Um, that would be just simply used for nose wheel steering and autopilot reference in your uh, F14 Tomcat, as well as the DLC slider for the DLC. All works, looks like it's working pretty well. The calibration, we've already calibrated the axis, so the calibration is already good to go. If for whatever reason, say the calibration in this profile got corrupted, all you would need to do is hit calibrate axes, go through that same thing we did of moving all the different axes through the full range of travel a couple times, and you will be good to go 100%. Then again, I always like just for my own peace of mind, going through and testing all the different buttons, like say the different the slider for the weapon controller uh, on the F14 grip, the tram hat, weapon release button, dual stage trigger, the nose wheel steering button, the autopilot disconnect button, and the DLC activate toggle, as well as the two DLC thumb wheel buttons as well. Kind of cool on a lot of these VPC stick grips is the axes at the end of their travel also act as a button. Uh, just make sure you don't have those dual mapped because that can be kind of annoying. Uh, you can also see here in this F14 grip that when, wherever the weapon selector is set to, Phoenix, Sparrows, Sidewinder, Gun, or Off, that button is constantly depressed in that, in that position. Doesn't make any difference in the F14 and DCS, but just something to be aware of, I guess. And then that is it. You are now ready to swap out another stick grip if you want, or just go rip around the sky in DCS with your F14 grip in your F14. I've got currently an F-18 grip, an 810 slash F-16 grip, the F-14 grip, a Warbird grip, as well as the T-50 grip. And I love switching them in and out very, very easily and quickly. So that way my grip that I'm holding onto mirrors the grip that's in the aircraft as close as possible. And really, really helps when it comes to setting up your controls in a natural way so that when you look down in your cockpit, that is the controls that you're feeling in your hand physically. Really great for VR players as well. Um, and with that, that is how you do it. All you'd need to do to say swap out your F-18 grip now would be to import profile from file, set your F-18 grip, open, save VPC device, and you're good to go. So I hope this uh, video was helpful for you guys. Um, I know that me first starting out with Verpal controls, this software was incredibly confusing. There were lots of tutorials out there that all said almost completely different things, like uh, totally debunked this idea that you need to have all your USB connections out, which in a modern RGB and fanned out computer is just 
absolutely not possible in a meaningful way. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Fly safe out there and stay healthy as well.